Hey everybody, it's Alika Lifty, and today we are brewing a collaboration coffee with our friends Lake Street Dive and us, Onyx Coffee Lab. And I'm here with our good friends Aki and Rachel, and we are going to brew a fellow Stag X. How are you two doing today? Marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> so That's full great. of coffee. I got to have a wonderful 30 minutes or an hour listening to y'all riff, play music, and brew you some coffee. Um, so yeah, I'm excited that now I get to help you brew a single cup of coffee. This looks very complicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of little pieces. But I have faith that you're gonna make us make a great cup. Well, thank you. I'm glad you have faith in me. Um, so we're gonna brew a single cup of coffee with this brewer that you're a little familiar with. Mm -hmm. This is a pour over method. So we are in control of all the variables. Um, we have a scale. We have this fellow Stag X dripper, um, filters, coffee is already dosed. Essentially, what all this extra stuff is, is just to help us measure everything so that we can be really consistent. Because yeah. like, if you've ever made a cup of coffee and been like, this is bad, but I don't know how to make it better. Knowing what we're actually doing is gonna help us be able to repeat that. And then when we get it good, we can be like, okay, this is what I do from now on. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna make a single cup of coffee. Um, and uh, I'll give you some tips how we could make that a bigger cup, how we can make that a smaller cup. Sure. Um, yeah. How do y'all usually drink your coffee? Um, I, first thing in the morning. Uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah, I, I usually make a pour over. Okay, very yeah. cool. So we're already hitting yeah. the right spot. Pour over is my first move as well. Yes. There you go. For sure. Do we do any creams, sugars? Black first yeah. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. first thing's black. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Milk comes later in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Milk like how treat. later in the day? So that's like our afternoon cup? It really mm -hmm. depends. I drink coffee well until the nighttime. Oh, oh, he sure goodness. does. And it gets milkier and milkier. Until it's yeah. just milk. It gets, becomes more of a treat. <laughs> it becomes more of a dessert. But that yeah. first cup, it's got to be straight yeah, up. straight up. I need okay. to know what it yeah. is. Afternoon, yeah, afternoon. So it just sportado. gets it's easier and easier. As Evening, maybe just a straight up espresso. Straight up espresso. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's like, how much sugar? Oh, we're talking like really, we're, we're, you're oh. even working into the next morning. Right before bed, I like a little cup. Mm. Yeah. It's <laughs> 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 they drink even more coffee than I do, and I thought I was over caffeinated. Nobody drinks I guess more coffee not. than I I can, yeah, drinks, now I know. He drinks I coffee know. like a screenwriter in Hollywood in the 40s. That's my <laughs> More coffee. Yes. Like, yeah. Well, we're not gonna have quite that much coffee today. We're gonna brew a single cup of coffee in this Fellow Stag right. X. Mm -hmm. um, our recipe today, we're gonna use 15 grams of coffee, which okay. is about three tablespoons of ground coffee. Cool. If you take a look at these grounds, I would call this like a medium fine. Yes, if I was making like a big coffee pot, um, I would use my grinder right in the middle. That would be medium. And so we are just a little bit more fine than that. A little bit more granular. Nice. So 15 grams or about three tablespoons. And we're gonna be brewing with 250 grams or milliliters of hot water. Okay. Um, and now y'all had a question about hot water temperature. We're brewing with these um, fellow Stag EKG kettles, which I think you both are familiar with, right? Indeed. I love them so much. Yeah, bow tie. Yeah. Bow tie. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful, accurate. Yep. Red Dot award winning. Great on any countertop or tour bus um, or hotel room. I've brewed my fair share of hotel room coffee. Um, so, gooseneck kettle, gonna give us really accurate results. We're gonna be brewing today with 205 degree Fahrenheit water, but we're gonna be okay if we're anywhere between 190 to 208. So you can get that black coffee just that much sooner. If you just wanna brew it like 190, we'll be all right. Um, so, first things first, I guess I'll slide back here in the middle. Um, I want y'all to grab a, well, I guess I'll hand it to you since I just went ahead and grabbed the whole thing. I'm gonna give you one single paper filter. We'll grab them from you. Yes, you'll grab them from me. From my palm, if you're able to. Oh, is this a contest? Oh. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, so there you go. Let's toss one of those paper filters into your brewer, and then I want you to grab your water kettles, either side. Water kettle. And then I just want you to pour the water straight in the middle of the filter. Oh, we're pouring uh, water. Water. We're pouring no water right we're now. We're pouring water in yep. the So let's keep going. Let's pour yeah. it a little bit heavier. Okay. Now I want to pre-wet this uh, filter and so warm this room. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's wet this here. I would go about halfway, and now you can let it go. Uh, there we go, we're gonna let okay. this go. So what this is doing, this is preheating our brew, just like we would want to preheat an oven, Yeah. which means that whenever we start brewing our coffee, the energy is gonna be spent getting all of that good flavor out of it right. instead of heating our brew. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Which is especially important in a thermal insulated brew. Like oh, this what a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Now there we go. go. 
Not only that, we're using paper filters and those are gonna rinse some of those fibers out so we don't have to taste them. So if you wanna grab your, uh, well, you can set your kettles down. Mm -hmm. And then let's dump the water out of our decanter so we don't give ourselves a very weak cup of coffee. We're gonna just dump it right into this grate right uh, in front okay. of you. Everything in this room is brewable. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Even us? Even you. Even me? Well, we are all one. That would in fact be cannibalism, which is frowned upon in most societies. But if you're just steeping yourself, it's not cannibalism. <laughs> it's a sauna. I mean, isn't that really just what a hot tub is? <laughs> hot tub. Yeah. So we've dumped our water. Um, you've got some little filter, or sorry, funnels that come with your stag X. Let's go ahead and toss that. Try to stick that in between the waves mm -hmm. of that filter, and let's dump our coffee into our brewers. That's fun. That's a nice little thing. Actually, it is nice. I had this and I didn't know what to do with it. I remember you That's being like, I don't know what this is for. I've taught like, a few classes so with this it's and confusing. people have just like thrown it away. They're like, you know, oh, I thought I, it was just a spacer. Well, I didn't, I've never pre-wet my filter, mm -hmm. which now I know. So I always did the lift up and then pour, but now you're right. It doesn't make sense once it's wet. You can't, Yeah. anyway. You could. Yeah. <sighs> you learn yeah. something new every day. Yeah. So right now we've got a little pile of coffee. I want right. you to pick up the brews okay. and give it a tap, tap, tap. I didn't know. Make that flex. Oh. I'm not doing anything. Make it you're not doing anything. You're not like supposed it. to okay, right great, now. Great, great, great. Okay. Yep. All right. The red alarms will blare if you do. Yep. Red alert. Get all those little little bits. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got all our coffee now. I want you to turn on your skills. Yours is already on. So I want you to hit that T button and tear it up. You're gonna hold that power button just a moment. There we go. So we are going to brew this coffee in three different pours. So this is what okay. we call. Um, pulse pouring or percolation. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit of terminology for you. A lot oh, of peace. Okay. I was going to ask, okay, a lot of peace. Mindset 21, I wouldn't turn those. Zero, yep. zero. We want everything to be zero. So, you've got a timer here on your left side. You've got your mass here on the right side. If you were just using like a kitchen scale or something, mm -hmm. you could just use a timer on your phone, right. your watch, anything like that. This is just going to help us be really accurate. Again, like even your frozen pizzas have mm -hmm. time ranges that you're supposed to cook them, but we right. want to make sure we know how long we are brewing our coffee for. Mm -hmm. So, that if you like that cup, you can repeat it. Mm -hmm. um, have y'all had any like coffee questions ever? Like, why we gotta grind it? Uh, that's a really silly one. Why do we gotta grind it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, coffee questions. Yeah. Any brewing coffee questions? Anything you've ever wondered about? Uh, I guess I have a question about time and extraction of flavors. Yeah, absolutely. Just like in general? In general, but with pour over, because mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. they say it's faster. Yeah. You can do it. Like in an espresso machine, you're getting the best concentration of flavors. Pour over takes a little bit longer. Right. Yeah, what's the difference? So that's a really good question. So we are using, I ironically don't have any coffee beans laying around, but oh, wait, I found one right here under oh. our, our little grinder. So effectively, what we're doing every time we're brewing a cup of coffee, right, yeah. is we're extracting flavor out of our coffee bean mm -hmm. with water. Mm -hmm. And so that's one reason why we have to grind it so mm -hmm. that we have more surface area. Right for this water to get into these cells uh, and why we have to use hot water so mm -hmm. that it can actually break in there and get all those flavors. And so essentially, there's a certain amount of flavor that we want to get out of every bean. And so if I use more coffee, I need a longer cook or extraction time. Mm -hmm. And if I have, how I change what kind of energy I'm adding to it, so if I use hotter water, then I can use a faster brew time and still get the same amount of flavor. Um, that description of like espresso, espresso is using not only hot water, but it's using high pressure. Mm -hmm. And so that again is more energy. And so it can extract similarly in like 20 seconds. Right. Whereas it's gonna take us about three minutes to brew our cup. Even though this dose is actually about what you would use for home espresso machine. Right. Yep. So it's all concentration and extraction. How much energy or time am I spending with that bean? versus how much I want to get out of it. And so we're gonna see how long this cup takes to drain. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's too fast or slow, we can make adjustments to get either more or less flavor out of it. Okay. Yeah. So we've got everything flat, everything is zeroed and ready to go. I want y'all to grab your kettles. Okay. Now the first pour is what we call our bloom phase. This is what I have questions about, so. Sorry. All right, so you're gonna start your timers and pour as light as you can, just try to wet all the coffee. It's going up. There we go. Yep, nice. So this is the bloom phase. You can see it's actually bubbling up. We've got a little bit of a foam. Oh, cool. Yeah, you're good right there. Isn't that... The bloom phase is important, mm -hmm. right? It is important. So this is where 
we ha are taking our dry grounds and now they are absorbing all this water and starting to dissolve flavor. If we poured way too much water, it would just be rinsing the coffee. We wouldn't uh, actually be extracting anything. I see. So at 40 seconds, you're gonna pour really heavy in the middle and we're gonna pour this up to 150 grams. Okay. So this is gonna read 150. 40 seconds, yep. and now we pour so it go ahead just in the middle. Dive in there. Yep, I'm just not gonna in the middle. You can do little tiny circles if you want. Tiny circles, okay. Drop in. Until it gets you can to pour one. heavier, right there. Heavier. Until it gets to 150. It'll be almost to the top of the brewer. Heavier, really heavier, water. heavier. Okay. About as heavy as this kettle's gonna let you. Oh, I see. This kettle's really good. It has what we call a blow restrictor. Ooh, okay. That's fine. Ugh. You're both good. Okay. You're within 10 grams, we're gonna be all right. Ooh. And see, it's draining really quick now because we have a lot more water in here. We have more pressure forcing water through mm -hmm. these grounds. And so mm -hmm. here at about 115, let's do it again to 250. And now we can do these little spirals. So I wanna pour really heavy again, but now I wanna rinse all the coffee back into the brewery. And so we've got these little waves. And I want to poke all of it down with my water, and you're good. Until what? Two fifty. Fifty. Yep. Two fifty. Okay. I'm almost there. I went a little fast. And that is okay. It's all right. So fifteen to two fifty is around a one to sixteen ratio, which is a pretty traditional drip coffee strength. Okay. Um, so what we're at right now, we add what's that? Twenty three, right? Like a one to seventeen. So a little bit more delicate cup. This is what I would expect um, the ratio to be if I were to get a cup in Australia, actually. So you've just made it a little bit more delicate cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Look at that. That's we're gonna awesome. look at you, world travelers. Mm -hmm. I love a delicate <laughs> cup. So they're I both draining really similarly. Look at that. That's really yeah, good. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. So we percolate because one, we want all that um, heat and energy from that first pour to mm -hmm. fill up that brew. Mm -hmm. So we start to get a lot more of those carbohydrates, which we taste as sweet. Yes. Um, and then keeping that steady flow throughout will help give us a really nice balance of acidity, sweetness, and texture. So it looks like we are pretty much done draining. You can take your brewers and set them onto, wow, we were both in sink, until you work We've made very a regularly lot together. Of coffee on Isn't the bus. that satisfying? It's, it is really it great. It goes on top of the, the mm -hmm. thing that you measured the coffee in I'm before. I'm so satisfied. I am <laughs> delighted. Set it aside. Ah, Additionally, I didn't even mention this. That little cup that we had our ground coffee in has little dots on it. Mm -hmm. So that single dot, yeah. if you're right under there, that's about 15 grams as well. That's your cup of coffee. That's your cup right of coffee. Right under that first dot. Yeah. Oh, all right, so we drained it about two minutes and 30 seconds, which is about what I expect for a 15 gram dose of coffee. Mm -hmm. It would be very easy for you to double this recipe if you wanted two more or more cups. You mentioned having a Stag XF, which is essentially two mm -hmm. of that dripper. Mm -hmm. And so you would just do more of those 100 gram pours until you get to um, that 450 mark or 480 mark. Cool. Yeah, so um, yeah, really good job, guys. Thank you. It was really nice. Um, the biggest thing is consistency. Like yes, I know exactly. I was telling you how to pour, and even if we're not doing it exactly now, if you are the one repeating that, then you can make these adjustments. So what I would love for you to do is give yourself just a little bit of coffee in your cups so that it is not gonna be like a thousand degrees and give it a little taste and tell me what we think about it. What I am looking for is balance. I don't want it to be too sour. I don't want it to be too weak. I, don't, I want it to be sweet and pleasant. So what do you think? Because there's things we can change uh, if we want it to be those things. Or how's the delicate nature of your cup? A little bit too delicate or just right? It's a bit too delicate a for me, too. but that's my fault, I think. What do you think you did? Uh, I, you know, I poured a little more water and I think I went a little slow before mm -hmm. in that first mm -hmm. pulse yep. percolation. Aki didn't period. get quite as much agitation in there. Mm. Which can get us more extraction. Do you want to see if mine tastes any different? Just I sure to do. Compare, do you or? want to taste my weekend? Yeah. <laughs> so if yours you want a stronger cup, then oh, you yeah, can grind. Oh yeah, yours is more delicate. Really? I think this has a nice balance. That's interesting. This has a nice. It's fun. This is. It's got a gorgeous. rainbow of sweetness. Yeah. Over this it. This is just. That's really cool. interesting. It's sort yeah. of straight yeah. ahead, and then you're like, oh. Yeah. So Aki's hit the 256 mark, mm -hmm. but was pouring lighter throughout, and you to 276 mm -hmm. so close to that so we actually had more water in this cup but yeah. yours tasted mine's a definitely more you can even see that's interesting. The, the color difference you're right yeah. that's really fun um this is a really nice coffee though um i expect these nice Super notes nice. of like light citrus mm -hmm. a little bit of berry in there um and milk chocolate yeah. 
I am getting mm. the berry and the citrus more from my delicate cup than I did from the more robust cup. Right. But I prefer the balance of yours. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is something as intensive as this something you would take? Like, is there any aspects of what we just did that you're going to apply now to Every your day. cups? Every well, day. The 42nd yeah. bloom, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and doing it in the center, because I was always just kind of going, I was immediately swirling. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know. Oh, and also wetting the filter. Welding, so I wet the filter at home. The bloom, though, I'm just, I usually just like guess. I'm like, eh, is it bubbling? When so it's not yeah, bubbling, the point I of the bloom, I usually yeah. do at least twice my volume. Okay. So if I had 15 grams in here, I want to yeah. bloom with at least 30 grams of water. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then you put your, the, the wait time doesn't change. You still doing 30 seconds? Are you 30 to even a minute and a half, oh. honestly. Mm. Yep. Oh, wow. At that point, you only have so much of your solvent water. Yeah. yeah. And so it's not going to impact your overall extraction right. as much at that point. And then after the bloom, that's when you want it. That's really what I active. really want to agitate. Yeah. Mix everything up, evenly distribute that heat, right. mm. and really fill up that brewer so that it starts to flow really fast. So that's when you go straight down the middle, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 yeah, just like that. I was tentative, <laughs> I say. A little bit too timid. I'm a tentative, I was to my toe right. in. <laughs> well, hey, wonderful job, everybody. I was Thank super you. excited to get yes. to show you a little bit um, you know, a different recipe of how to make some coffee. Yeah, thank you so much. Very elucidating, thank mm -hmm. you. Oh my yeah. goodness, what great, what great words. <laughs> the coffee is speaking through me. <laughs> oh, this smells so pulchritudinous. Pulchritudinous. <laughs> <laughs> this brew guy is like a mad lib right now. Y'all yeah. yeah. cheers. Oh, yeah. cheers? cheers oh, oh wait, I'm out of cup. Somehow, somehow. Okay. Slante, and enjoy.